This is the bush that I've probably encountered the most in the countryside of Mallorca, apart from pistache lentiscus, of course. The edible red berries decorate beautifully the landscape, and it's a really healthy snack that makes walks more enjoyable. This is the hawthorn, Crategus monogina, from the Rosiaceae family. The hawthorn grows naturally in mostly all of Europe and the Middle East, and it has been introduced in North America, South Africa, Australia and New Zealand. And you cannot miss this bush. It has beautiful foliage and bright red fruit. Both the fruit and the leaves are edible. And actually, the floral bud too, and the flowers. So basically, the whole plant is edible. How wonderful is that? And to add to that, it has many health benefits. Now, before eating this plant, let's see how we can recognize it. First of all, the hawthorn is a deciduous shrub. That means that it loses its leaves in the winter. So that means it makes it harder to recognize this plant in the winter because it has no leaves. But it bears thorns. The thorns don't disappear in the winter. Hence the name hawthorn. And in fact, haw is the name of the fruit of the shrub and thorn, well, because it bears thorns, so hawthorn. So plant names always make sense. Oh, they're really sharp. And you can understand because as I said earlier, the hawthorn is entirely edible and this makes it very attractive to hungry animals. So it has to protect itself. But it doesn't protect itself from us humans. <laughs> Hawthorn leaves are alternate, glabrous, which means hairless, and deeply lobed. Now, generally, the leaves of the hawthorn have three to seven lobes. Now, as you can see, they vary quite a bit. Here I have a leaf with three lobes and here I have a leaf with five deep lobes. But yeah, it varies. So three to seven is the general rule. Now, the flowers of the hawthorn that appear in the springtime form clusters that we call corymbs. Now, the exciting part, the fruit of the hawthorn, or should I say the haw. look like tiny red apples and they also taste like apples. This makes sense because they're from the same family than the apple, the Rosaceae family. And if you look at the bottom of the fruit, there's this characteristic star shape or sometimes it's a cross on the bottom of the fruit. And all Rosaceae plants have this characteristic mark on the bottom of their fruit. Take the rose hip, for example, wild rose, Rosa canina from the Rosaceae family, and it also has this characteristic mark at the bottom of its fruit. So there you go. Okay, so I've kind of cleaned this fruit a bit. Not perfect, but it'll do. Always clean your fruit, you know, make sure there's not something gross on it or something inside it, of course. Let me see what it tastes like. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. It's literally like a mini apple. That's crazy. Mmm. This is the first time I taste haws because I've been waiting for them desperately to come. Mmm. Wow. Not bad. Mmm. Very tasty. Mmm. Okay, so I am calling this a fruit, but in strict botanical terms, this is a false fruit. Now, a true fruit develops from the ovary of the flower, 
but with a false fruit, the fleshy part develops from the floral components. And other examples of false fruits are pineapples, strawberries, apples, pears, you know, that kind of thing. Now, got my knife out. Always carry a knife with you when you're on walks. So, I want to do a clean cut of the fruit to show you how it is inside. So that always gets a bit messy, because it's a bit squishy. Okay, well, not great. So, if you see inside the fruit, cuts like an apple. I swear, that's crazy. Um, there's one stone inside the fruit. And there's only one species of hawthorn that has only one stone in its fruit because other species will have multiple stones while this one only has one so you're sure it's Crataegus monogyna mono means one so one stone so it makes sense yeah there are always tips in you know, botany to recognize you'll always know there's a characteristic for sure that differentiates a certain species from another Now this is the heart plant. It's great for the heart. It helps protect against heart diseases, it improves blood circulation, and it controls blood pressure and high cholesterol. Now the leaves, flowers, and fruit contain flavonoids, and these have antioxidant effects. Haws contain a few calories and are high in vitamin C. Now they're not as high in vitamin C as rose hips are, but you know, it's not too bad. And there are so many whores on one hawthorn that you can totally get your dosage of vitamin C. <laughs> so as I said, the entire plant is edible, except the bark, don't try to chew the bark. <laughs> so all parts can be used raw, cooked, baked. Uh, you can use the fruit uh, to prepare jams. Uh, you can make tinctures and herbal teas. So a very versatile plant. It's amazing and I love it and it's everywhere. So. This is amazing. <laughs> so the hawthorn is an amazing plant. It's abundant, it's great for the health, it's super tasty. So we should definitely enjoy what it has to offer. Uh, of course, with the utmost respect, as always. Uh, I hope you enjoyed discovering the hawthorn with me and I will see you with the next plant. Bye. Mmm, that's really good.